Good afternoon you lovely people, welcome back to Lily White Lane, I hope that you're all having a ruddy good Tuesday and week wherever you are in the world and whatever you are planning to get up to. If you're new here, make sure if you haven't ready to smash that subscribe button, give it a rocky right hook, hit that like button as hard as you possibly can, abuse all the buttons on the channel including the notification bell so you'll be notified and let know every single time we upload new pieces of Spurs of football content. And finally, be sure to comment your thoughts and opinions down below. Without further ado, enough faffing about. Let's get cracking with this knacking and debrief. Yesterday's game at the King Power that ended 1-1 between Tottenham Hotspur and Leicester City. I've got a list of positives and negatives that I want to go over from yesterday's game. So let's delve into them. Starting things off with the positives. And the first big positive for me was the first half. Everything went perfectly in that first half, apart from the fact that we didn't score more than one goal. The game should have been completely done. Romeo done. We should have been three or four nil up by half time, and we weren't because we weren't clinical enough. Everything else in that first half was brilliant. The performances of the entire team, the football that we were playing, the pass and accuracy as well, threading passes through the middle, it was brilliant. It was absolutely brilliant. It was a joy to watch in that first half, but... You just felt that away from home, you don't take your chances. The game's always there, up for grabs, and Leicester could get a goal. And they did in the second half. They did in the second half. But as I say, the first half was really, really encouraging. If we played like that against bottom half of the table sides consistently for 90 minutes this season, we'll blow them away. But will we be able to? That's the question, you know. This system is going to struggle against the Newcastles, the Arsenals, the Manchester Cities because of how high of a line we play. So we're going to need points out of the bottom half of the table teams. And we've got to be consistent playing this football for 90 minutes, especially away. And yesterday showed that because the minute we switch off, as I say, away from home in the Premier League, we're going to concede with the style of play that we have. So, look, first half was really encouraging. Really positive, some great performances in there. James Madison, I thought, was absolutely fantastic, especially that first half. He looked like the James Madison at the beginning of last season. and Hopefully he can keep that up because there were a lot of people, including me, saying that Bergvall should start. Madison started and, as I say, cemented his place in that team for the next game against Everton. Look, better 1v1 defending. That's a note that I've put down. I think that will allow us to have much more control in game, especially with uh, with our style of play where we want to dominate possession. And I thought our 1v1 defending yesterday was very, very solid when Leicester were attacking us. I think um, the press from Dominic Solanke as well was really, really encouraging, really positive. Didn't get a goal. We had a couple of chances where you could argue we probably should do, uh, should do a little bit better. But I'm going to cut him since Black is his debut and... As I say, that press coming from when we didn't have that last season. We didn't even have that with Harry Kane, really. So it's good to have a pressing striker. Now, when that goal comes, I think, as I say, will pretty much bang him in every week, pretty much. So, look, it's just about getting that first goal, getting that confidence up for Solanke. And I think once he gets that first goal, as I say, gets a bit of momentum, he can go on a good streak. Like Richardson did last season, where we had those 10 games in a row or something where he scored. I wouldn't be surprised if Solanke has a similar streak of games where he keeps banging him in the back of the onion bag. So look, Solanke, I thought for a debut for, uh, performance, was really encouraging. And yeah, there, there were a fair few positives to take away from yesterday's game. You know, all of the first half performances, James Madison, excellent, the pressing in the first half, Solanke's debut, especially in the first half, you know. The goal, brilliantly crafted, Pedro Porro, excellent, really, really excellent. I said everyone done well with Pedro Porro and James Madison, Really, really stood out. And it's no surprise that they were the ones who linked up for the goal. The 1v1 defending. Ben Tanker playing in the six did it really, well, uh, really, really well. But most of the positives that I've just listed were in the first half. Because the second half, especially those 10 minutes after we conceded, it was a pile of elephant shite, weren't it? It really, really was. We started the first half OK, but what a crap goal to concede. I mean, fair play to Jamie Vardy, 37 years of age, a Premier League legend and still banging them in. But what's Romero doing? What's he got on his mind, you know? Jamie Vardy is right behind him. How is he not tracking the runner who is right behind him? Completely loses Vardy. It's a free header. I mean, if he misses it, he's going to have the piss taken out of him over the next few weeks. But he puts it away, as I say. And those 10 minutes after, I thought Leicester looked to be the team building momentum. 
and we started to capitulate and that's a huge negative and a huge worry because if we're doing that against bottom half of the table size what's going to happen when we concede a goal to an Arsenal, a Newcastle, a Man City, a Liverpool, a Man United probably the same as last season this is one of my big worries I still see us getting battered this season a few times like we did last year. I see us battering the opponents a few times, but when we're coming up against these top sides, if we play as open as we did, even if we've made you know slight improvements to the squad, I still see us getting opened up like a can of beans. Do you know what I mean? So, look, it's something that needs to be sorted out. And when we concede a goal, you know, I don't like using the word bottle, but... A bottle just seems to go. And this is not a hand issue. It wasn't a potch issue. It wasn't a Nuno issue, Jose issue, Conte issue. This has been an issue at this football club for as long as I can remember, as long as my dad can remember, and as long as my granddad can remember. When Spurs can see the goal, when the going gets tough, we just start to capitulate a little bit. We just start to fall apart, you know what I mean? And it's so frustrating because we had so much control over the game. You could argue when you look at the stats, even at the end of the 90 minutes, it was a bit of a freak result. But we can see that goal, and if it wasn't for the Ben Tanker injury stoppage and the four substitutions from Manchester that allowed him to make, we could have come away and we could be talking about a 2 1 Leicester win today. So, it's something that we've got to do. When we concede a goal, right? I'm someone, possession means nothing in my opinion unless it leads to something. Everyone's going 70% possession yesterday. I haven't listed that as a positive because so what? You had all of the ball. Congratulations. It, you know, we, we drew the game one one and we weren't clinical enough with our opportunities. Possession's mean, uh, possession means nothing if it doesn't lead to anything. But I don't mind when we concede a goal away from home, the crowd's getting up for it. If we just knock the ball around, make simple passes for five minutes and take this thing out of the crowd. But we still try and make in my opinion, too ambitious of a pass or too ambitious passes at that time in the game. We allow them to get back into it. The crowd gets up for it. Vardy has another chance. Then the stoppage comes and, the, you know, 15 to 20 minutes after that, we look the more likely to go and get a goal. But it's a worry that we concede a goal away from home first game of the season and the team starts to fall apart like they did last season again. It's something that needs to be sorted out. It's a mentality issue that needs to change if we're ever going to win anything and be successful at this football club. I see a lot of people criticising Ange Postacoglu. I think 80% of yesterday is on the players. You know, we should have been 3 or 4 nil up at half-time. Ange wasn't the one who missed, you know, those clinical chances that we should have taken away in that first half. And wasn't the one, you know, who completely lost his man at the far post and allowed Leicester's striker to hit it into the back of their net. That was Christian Romero. The chances missed. Those are our attacking players. Your Brennan Johnson, your Dominic Solanke. I will cut him some slack because it's his debut. Your Hyungmin son. Speaking of Hyungmin son and Brennan Johnson, whilst we're on negatives, right? I'm glad we've got Odebert in. I am. I still think we need another winger. And Eze, hopefully, do I think we'll get him? Probably not. I think there's more chance for my forward shrinking now, knowing Daniel Levy and the way he operates in the transfer market. But it will be interesting to see what about because he, in my opinion, will take his man on and beat him far more many to, oh, sorry far more times than Hyungmin Sun and Brennan Johnson. Yesterday, both just looked so tentative to take on their man. I mean, Brennan Johnson. I'm sick of hearing. Oh, he's young. You know, he's had season after season in the Premier League. This is his second season at Spurs. Last season. He made an impact coming off the bench, fair play to him, right? But he's starting every time he started for Spurs. He's looked really poor. He's looked really poor. He looks like he lacks confidence. And when he looks at his best, is in the 70th minute when he's brought on and he has that injection of pace when the opposition are tired. When both teams have the same level of fitness, he really tends to struggle. He really can't beat his man. He really can't do anything, you know, that isn't ordinary or basic on the ball. And Hyung Min Sun is just... It's upsetting to see, isn't it, with Young Son? It's like Tony Ferguson as an MMA fan. You're just watching his downfall, and it's gutting. It's gutting because I remember the play. Sorry, I remember the fighter that he was. You know, the Tony Ferguson with the spinning elbows who used to knock people out and was going to fight Khabib four years ago. The Hyung Min Son, who was banging in goals left, right and centre, who was sprinting past his man, leaving him for dead and slotting it comfortably into the back of the net. Is that player still in there? Because he looks so tentative to take on his man. He looks so tentative. Every time he got the ball in a promising position on the left-hand side yesterday, especially in the second half, he wouldn't take on his man. He'd either try, uh, you know, try and play a ball in where he didn't have that much space and it would be blocked, or just take a few touches, slow down the play, allow Leicester to regroup and pass it backwards. That's not the sun I remember. The sun I remember was against Burnley years ago when we beat them 5-0. We've run through the whole team. 
the son who when he was one on one would blitz his man destroy his man batter his man and put the ball so easily into the back of the net is he that player he can still score wonder goals He's still capable of doing it, but the question is, is he capable of doing it on a consistent basis? In my opinion, no, and if you're not doing it on a consistent basis in the Premier League, you may not be good enough anymore. It really hurts with young min son. It really hurts with young min son. But I had a massive debate midway through last season with Haz on the uh, on the Spurs, um, I believe it was the Spurs Kings channel. Yeah, it, <clears throat> it was. Haz, great guy in the, in the Spurs community. And we are... We had a good debate. Harry Scarf was on there as well, but me and Haz were debating about Young Min Sun, and he was saying that Sun's washed, Sun's done, and I was saying no because midway through the season, his stats looked really good. He was, you know, banging in goals, especially in those first ten games. But second half of the season, I found myself agreeing with him more and more each game that passed. And by the end of the season, I started to think to myself, he was probably bang on. That end to the season was so poor. And I know it's only one game, as I say, but nothing really seems to have changed in his performance, especially in today's, sorry, yesterday's game against Leicester. So, Odebert will have to see what he brings. I still think we need an SA in there. I still think we need a proper number, you know, number six or number eight to come in and do a job. Probably not going to happen now in the transfer window. We may get a backup keeper. There's talk about bringing in that Fiorentina backup keeper. So, we'll see what happens there. But yeah, Odebert, if he's fit for the next game, Start him over Jung Min Son. I don't care that 2,000 Korean fans travel over for the games. I don't care that he brings the Asian market over. You know, so many fans from Asia just watch the Spurs games for Jung Min Son. I'm a Spurs fan. I want Spurs to be successful. And if we, you know, want to win next weekend's game, you play players who want form and you play players who you think are going to do better in the team. And in my opinion, Odebert will over Jung Min Son. And if he doesn't, as I say... At least we would have found out by the 90 minutes that this guy isn't good enough and we've still got time to go out there and sign a player. So, Hyung Min Sun, it's starting to see what's happening to him, like the Tony Ferguson downfall or, you know, Dominic Ray's downfall in MMA. If you're a UFC fan, you'll get my reference. But, yeah, I'm hoping that I'm wrong. I'm praying that I'm wrong. I'm hoping that next game he scores five goals and in his post-match interview says, sod you, Robbie, but I don't see it. I really don't see it. He's so tentative, almost scared to take on his man. He doesn't trust his pace anymore, you know. Let's stop Let's stop being so sentimental as a fan base and see the fact that he's not the player that he once was. There's still a limit to that player in there, of course there is, but he's not the son who's going to score 20 to 25 goals a season. He's playing with Harry Kane, who's scoring bangers week in, week out from outside the box, who's blitzing opponents and wing-backs and left-backs and right-backs on the wing. So, look... It's starting with Hyung Min Sun, as I say. He was very poor yesterday. Udoji, another one. I really like Destiny Udoji. I think he's got a lot of potential and was brilliant last season. Really poor yesterday. Really poor. The amount of times the Leicester player had their back to only found them for no reason. Giving away stupid fouls that were giving them good opportunities. You know, he wasn't great whatsoever. He really wasn't great whatsoever. But when it comes to Udoji again... I'll cut him some slack, not because it's his debut like Dominic Solanke, but because he performed on a consistent basis for a majority of last season, and it is the first game of the season. Whereas Xiong Min Sun, that was 10 to 15 games at the end of last season, he played poorly, and he's had another game quite poor, you know. So, look, a lot of positives to take out of yesterday, definitely a lot of negatives. Again, I'm not Andrew Postacoglu's biggest fan, I think he can be ridiculously stubborn and sometimes stupidly naive. I think his style of play sometimes lets us down and how rigid it is. But having said that, I can't blame him for yesterday because that man coached a 3 or 4 nil win, especially the way we performed in that first half. You can't blame him for Romero losing concentration or Spurs not being clinical enough. If we conceded a goal, as I say, where our high nine was breached by a quick player, then I'd have a go at him for not dropping the line back a little bit when doing his pre-match talk. Not saying that one wing back will be inverted and the other one will cover the centre-back. So, look, can't blame Ange Postacoglu. A lot of the blame goes to players way yesterday, but... I've seen a lot of Spurs fans, I would say, overreact to this game. And by overreact, I don't mean the fans, you know, who are saying it was a very poor performance. It's not encouraging, it's worrying. But the fans, the idiots, who are going, Ange out, it's a disgrace, it's the same old thing. It genuinely feels like some fans are more fussed about their points being proven about players and the manager than they are about the football club. Again, I'm talking about a very small minority and specific group of fans. Not the fans like me and many other Spurs YouTubers who are going, it was very poor, not encouraging, there's concerns there. 
is Ange, as I say, going to be able to adapt? It's the people, in in my opinion, who were saying, you know, Ange out this player, sell him, sell him, sell him, sell that player. So again, it's 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 first game of the season. The fitness levels, I don't want to hear anything about, you know, still getting the fitness levels up. Everyone else is playing their first game of the season and most of the other big clubs won their games quite comfortably. But if we don't win against Everton, then we hit the panic button because then we've got Newcastle away and Arsenal at home after. And I haven't seen nothing that, as I say, shows to me that we're not going to get hammered like we did last season by those teams away and at home. So we need that win against Everton, not only because they're coming off a 3-0 win, not only because, as I say, the fans have completely lost their heads with the club. Not only because they're a club in an absolute mess. Not only because they're missing half of their team due to injury. But because we need that win because of what's coming. Not just, as I say, for points on the board because of the two games after. But for momentum, for confidence. Yesterday, conceding that goal and not getting the win when you look at the stats we probably should have. That must have dented the confidence. We need to get that back. We need to build that momentum. And we need to head into the two games after with confidence. And the rest of the season with confidence, in all honesty. But look, as I say, guys, comment your thoughts and opinions on the positives and negatives I've listed on the performance yesterday, the game as a whole. Take care of yourselves. All the best. Have a smashing rest of your day. And as always, commonly Spurs, in Big Antry Trust, Enoch and Levy out.